Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Shane. For those who are new, welcome back if you're returning. So I have a few videos to react to today. If you remember on March 11th when Micah was getting her tires fixed, it was alleged that JP had done this because the PI had taken either photos or videos of Micah with another man. Mind you, Micah and JP were separated, but they had not officially been divorced at this point. But remember, JP Miller in the meantime was asking a waitress for swimsuit photos. We didn't know the identity of of the man that Micah was seen with, but we believe it might have been an old member of the church named DJ. I just want to take a look at this voicemail first with you guys because I can't get myself to believe that this investigation is over. I think it's important that we continue to look into these clips and these interviews. I have to take care of it, but like you'll see a little pop-up over here occasionally. Uh, please ignore it. <laughs> but this is the conversation between the man Michael is alleged being seen out and about with, uh, and J.P. Miller. Hey, sorry, Mom and Brian called me out of the room, because before I called you, I went in there and bit her. Yeah, where did you touch her? Um, I mean, just, like, nowhere, nowhere below reproach, I mean, that's a promise. Well, the, the, the person that saw him get, did all, got the picture said that you touched her chest. It's so strange that JP is like, give me more details. To me, it's weird. He's almost like, tell me more, you know, tell me more. What did you guys do? Where did you touch? Like, I, I, mm, I don't think I would probe for those kind of details, especially if obviously not being in the relationship anymore is still bothering me. I don't think I would want to know everything. Personally, I just think it's a little bit weird that he's asking for um, those details to be elaborated on. My, my guess said there was more than that. More than what? More than what you're telling me. Well, I'm telling you, if you have the videos and the pictures, you can fact check it. I mean, I'll, he'll, have, I'll, he'll have them to me by morning time. But he told me there was more than that. Well, that is, that is exactly what happened. JP just said that he'll his PI will have the photos and stuff to him by the morning time. So JP, according to what he just said, hasn't even confirmed anything through actual tangible proof so his PI must have just called him and said either either knows this guy personally so, so can call him out by name or describe him well enough that JP knows who he's talking about so I guess JP's calling him without even seeing photos or videos I don't know if JP's telling the truth and hasn't actually seen anything yet maybe just received a phone call from his hired PI but if I was put in this situation I would have done the opposite I would have waited I would have waited until I got the photos, videos, all the evidence that I needed and then called the person and even possibly not even disclose that I had that information yet or knew the truth to see if their story matched what I already knew or not. However, JP telling him that he hasn't seen the photos or videos yet may also be a way to sort of persuade him into telling him the truth because now if he lies and believes that JP will be able to fact check that in the morning based on uh, photos or surveillance footage, he might be more inclined to tell the truth. But even then, we're not hearing that much else happened. There was nothing more, I promise you that. And then you'll see that. He, he said that both of y'all touched each other inappropriately. No. Other than, than, than normal kissing, and how, how long was the kissing? Why does that matter? Again, that's kind of going back to my point of just like wanting to know these details that I don't know if I would want to know. Oh, I've totally, I've completely forgot to mention, by the way, I'm going to be taking these, I got to take these little prongs off, by the way. Um, my daughter plays violin, so I use her music stand as like a little laptop thing, but it works. I guess. I guess. Yeah. 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 Y
Yes. Mm-hmm. I mean... Oh, he's like, wait. Oh, he grows to He's like waiting. He won't move past this. JP is waiting for him to answer. How long? How long? How long? That That's all this dead space. Is JP waiting for him to tell him how long he was kissing his uh, soon-to-be ex? I honestly couldn't give you a time frame on it. 30 minutes? Um, no, not, not anything like that. I was going to say. And you know this is adultery, right? This is straight-up adultery. Uh, JP, do you forget how you and Micah began in the first place? What's that saying? Any relationship built on another woman's tears will crumble or something like that? I don't know how much truth there is to that, but... I do, and I'm repenting to you. Because we're not, we're not legally separated. Did you just say that? Even if we were legally separated, it's still adultery. <laughs> I'm going to backtrack a couple of seconds, but did I just catch him saying I'm repenting to you? This guy is profusely apologizing to JP. Like, I think he is genuinely, maybe not scared of him, but definitely intimidated. He's a member of the church. JP is essentially his boss. He just did naughty things with the boss's wife. I mean, this guy's sweating. The, the, the details JP wants though is throwing me off a bit and then when I caught the word repenting, uh, when I re when I think of repenting I think again more of a, I think of like the the Catholic faith right where you go and confess your sins to the, the pastor. I can't speak on something I don't know very much about but I just thought I touched on Micah allegedly possibly being groomed um, at Solid Rock and I feel like a lot of that goes for not just the young girls but also the young boys too and not even necessarily a romantic way like it turned out for Micah but even with this member here I don't know how long he's been part of the church he's clearly trying to say sorry and and possibly save his job or receive some sort of forgiveness that's obviously valuable to him otherwise he would have been like listen you big lug just a month ago you were texting a waitress yeah I think this conversation would have been much different if this member wasn't trying to stay in JP's good graces. We're not legally separated. Even if we were legally separated, it's still adultery. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, we need... And I am incredibly, incredibly sorry. And I honestly do not expect a... Do you, what do you think, why do you think she called you? Like, do you really, do you not see the... You, you talk about this discernment, you literally have zero discernment. <laughs> but... You know, discernment, by the way, for those of you who might not be aware, I could look up the technical term, but it's basically, I believe it's like a God-given ability to be able to distinguish the difference between like good and evil spirits. So JP is alluding to this guy has no discernment. You can't pick up on what good and evil is. It's just a little of a, like spiritual pettiness, I suppose. The married woman called you and asked to meet you at the beach? I did. That was incredibly. I thought you had a sermon. You said you had a sermon better than a seventy-year-old man. I was saying better than some seventy-year-old man. And, you know, I'm not. I'm not on the phone to argue with you. Um, you know, we're. I'm repenting to you. I. I honestly don't know what else to tell you other than to ask for your forgiveness. And honestly, I don't even expect that from you. No, I um, forgive you. No, I, I, I forgive you. And, you know, I, like, I am sick to my stomach just from all of it, the whole you thing. You know, Mike, did the same exact thing to me 10 years ago. Exact same thing. We met at the same place. Really? Yeah, and it was just incredibly stupid. On Hold my on. Part. And I take, I take all the responsibility. Is she saying she wants to date you or marry you or anything like that? Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Whoa, wait, whoa. Whoa. I was giving him a second to see if he would bring up the fact that it takes two to tango. Yeah, she did the exact same thing to me 10 years ago, talking about being unfaithful, but failed to mention that he did the exact same thing to his wife and kids. I was giving him a second to see if he would, like, throw that in there, but nope. He just threw Micah under the arc and he was driving it. I cannot believe he just said that. We're getting into something else he just said. I'm going to go back a second. Let's try here. Was it date you or marry you or anything like that? 
Okay, that's weird. That's weird. That's the part that I was talking about. Now he's asking this guy, does Michael want to date you? or marry you, like it went from zero to a hundred. To me that gives a little bit of insight into how JP thinks of Micah. The way that I'm thinking JP is looking at this, right, is that Micah had already had an affair from her first husband, Jeremy, with JP, who was with Allison at the time. Now JP seeing Micah out with somebody else, He's basically saying, oh look, that's typical, she's already done it. I think he looks at it like she just jumps from one person to the next very quickly, but again, takes no accountability into his own actions. He's not even bringing up the text message conversation, and he never will. Uh, no, I mean, it's just really basic conversation. And honestly, she didn't even really mention you or anything. It was all just like normal, Conversation. She talked about like the Valor's Church and um, how she was going there and liked it. So. And you kissed her, or she kissed you. It was really like a mutual thing. Again, you were holding hands. Yeah. Okay, we didn't answer that earlier when I said how y'all were touching. You never said y'all were holding hands. And you're right, but yeah, you're, you asked. Yeah, you're right. Y'all held hands for a long time. Um, I went definitely not the whole time, but. Um, I mean, an extensive period, definitely longer than, than we kissed. Okay, if you want to check out this whole interview, again, I'll leave it linked down below. It is so bizarre. First, he asks how long they kissed, and then he finds out that they were holding hands, and then asks how long they were holding hands. Like, very, very strange. Next, we're going to take a look at the video from Fitz and News. This was when they were talking about Micah's family reaching a global settlement. Uh, today, John Paul Miller, Solid Rock Church, Inc., and the estate of Micah Francis Miller, along with individual members of the Francis family, have reached a full and final settlement on all presently filed litigation. The parties have also signed a full mutual release on all potential future litigation, the terms of the settlement agreement are sealed under a confidentiality agreement. The agreement and release include but are not limited to the dismissal with prejudice of the matters currently pending in both family court and probate court of Horry County. You just witnessed in court the, the withdrawal of the petition in, in probate court. Um, Micah's family, Pastor Miller, and the church have set their differences aside to allow Micah's memory to live on without the encumbrance of contentious litigation. All parties now consider this matter closed. Those that have sought justice for Micah should feel accomplished in helping the, Fran the Francis family in reaching this milestone. South Carolina criminal investigators have concluded their work of following up on the investigation done by Robinson County Sheriff's Office in this case with nothing new to report. Unfortunately, we don't know every piece of information that led to the death of Micah. We do know that her life did serve a purpose. Her life mattered. Those that have spent every Sunday morning protesting outside of Solid Rock Church, chanting, Justice for Micah, should recognize this time of healing and move on with their lives. We only ask that you remember Micah as the wonderful, beautiful person that she was. And now Regina may have something to say. Before Regina talks, how can we conclude an investigation if he just said himself that we don't know all the details leading up to her uh, 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 suicide? It, uh... it is true that we reached a global settlement on all issues that could have been brought uh, to court. Some additional things that are, uh, some things that are pending now, as well as things that could have been filed, those have been resolved as well. As far as justice for Micah, that we are ready to go to the next chapter. And the next chapter is to go and convince our General Assembly to take a look at the Coercive Control Law Bill. We need that on the agenda ASAP. We need it taken seriously. We need it to be made into law in the very next session of the General Assembly. Standing by and doing nothing is unacceptable. It is absolutely embarrassing. I urge everyone, if you want the final piece of justice for Micah, which means justice for all who 
have been domestically abused, please, please put your efforts into getting in touch with your legislators. Get in touch with the people who have the power to do something here. And do it now. These other things that you're doing, that time has passed. It is time to move to the next chapter. We want to focus on the memory and the beauty of Micah and everything that she has represented for herself and every single person that has ever been in her situation. And we, her family, when I say we, I'm talking about the Francis family. They need your help. They need your help on this. We don't want to talk about Mr. Miller anymore. We want to move forward to the next chapter, and that is getting this law passed. So I urge you, please, contact my office if you want to volunteer. We are putting together benefits to raise money for this cause. We are also looking at a potential rally on the Capitol if the General Assembly doesn't get it together. Okay, so she got really emotional there for a moment. Her voice was cracking. I'm really just hoping that this is not the end of it because there are just so many questions left unanswered. Literally an hour ago, the Robbie Harvey posted a new update about this case. I'm just curious what he has to say. Now, I have read comments here on my channel. I don't know how reliable anybody is on the internet, so I take everything with a grain of salt. Every TikTok I watch, every YouTube video, every interview, I'm going to put my own opinion on it. However, in his videos, he's claimed that he's been able to have contact people who are directly involved with this case and so he might know a few things that we don't so I do like taking a couple looks at his videos just days ago John Paul Miller and the family of his now deceased wife agreed upon a settlement between the two sides on current and all future lawsuits this is on the civil side but still this was indeed a shocking turn of events especially when John Paul Miller's attorney made this announcement after the agreed upon settlement. South Carolina criminal investigators have concluded their work of following up on the investigation done by Robinson County Sheriff's Office in this case with nothing new to report. At first listen, it also sounds that all criminal investigations have concluded, but he was intentional with his wording. Listen again. South Carolina criminal investigators have concluded their work of following up on the investigation done by Robinson County Sheriff's Office in this case with nothing new to report. Later in the press conference, he was challenged on that statement. Take a listen. Attorney Law, you referenced the state reviewing some of the Robeson County investigations. I also noticed that your statement conspicuously did not mention any potential federal investigation into Pastor Miller. Can you comment on the status of that federal investigation? Can you tell us which state agency reviewed the Robeson County investigation? I don't believe I indicated state or federal. I said South Carolina investigators. You can, can you tell uh, us who you were referring to when you were... I'm referring to whoever has investigated this case, state. federal and state. Yes, sir. So all, from your perspective, all criminal inquiries into John Paul Miller are concluded? We believe so. We have every reason to believe so. Um, we've asked uh, for definitive answers on that and the answers and or lack of answers that we've received can only lead to that answer that we in fact that they have in fact um, concluded their investigation somehow Russell B Long has come to the conclusion that there is no investigation well because the FBI won't answer his questions but now take a listen to this in an interview conducted the same day Regina Ward the attorney for Micah Miller and her family says this in regards to a possible federal investigation. Let me ask you this question. What do you think happened that day? Well, of course, anything that I would think is speculation, and that is the million dollar question. Um, I personally believe that that answer to that or some form of answer to that will be on that cell phone or that Apple Watch that is in the possession of the legal authorities. Um, and so we have a court order requiring those things to be released to my office and they won't release it until they have finished their quote investigation. But not only that, I have confirmed that the FBI investigation 
is not only continuing, it may be growing. According to sources, the FBI may not only be looking into John Paul Miller, but they may be looking into as many as five individuals. The identities of those individuals and the role they play in this story is unknown. And the oh, I, also, I, I wonder if one of them is Trisha Ross, because I wondered whatever. I know she was under FBI investigation, but... <gasps> oh, 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 oh. Okay. I was able to confirm that the multiple alleged victims of John Paul Miller still plan on coming forward. And we can expect lawsuits at any time now. Oh, wow. And okay. I'm going to let you again watch the entire thing. If you want, the uh, video will be linked down below. We talked about alleged possibly minors coming forward and discussing or filing um, reports against JP for SA. What Robbie is referring to are those reports potentially still coming forward. Now, if they are minors, we may never know the identity of them. We may never know the details, but again, there might still be an investigation done. As far as what we're Gina Ward said about the cell phone as well. Is this is this JP's cell phone? Please let me know because I'm going to do some more research. But what cell phone are they talking about? Do they have JP's cell phone or do they have Micah Francis's cell phone? And she's trying to get her hands on it and they're saying not until we're done with our investigation. <gasps> Could there be some tampering of evidence? Could there be things that could break the case wide open? I hate that the investigation seems to be moving past Micah at this point. And I still continue to hope that people look into the cause of her death because suicide or not, I believe someone still needs to be held accountable. And they're still persistently pushing for Micah's law to be put into effect. New laws don't come into effect for no reason. I believe, if, if nothing less, I believe that JP has at least been found guilty and weaponizing religion and God. Allegedly. That's going to be it for today's video. Let me know what you guys think about everything below. Please don't forget to check out the videos I left for you as well. And I will see you in my next one.